Okay, we're back in session. Um, a couple more members have requested that uh, they have a couple more questions to be answered, so we'll hold the vote in abeyance and, until that time. Uh, Kurt? Um, so we, we've spent, what you're saying, we, we spent 48750 We have to spend a total of 243750 to come to get to that point. Yes, sir. Ms. Okay. Davis just gave me that number. $243,750 is 65, 75%. 75%. Well, I can't do numbers. It's very well. another 195000 or so. Well, I think that's exactly what it is. 190. Right. Something like that. Well, I could say, I guess I could, could subtract on this phone. Yeah. Okay. I think with, you know, with, with that, I, I want to see what it costs. Um, I, I know it's necessary and we need it. Um, I don't disagree with the size. I, I just want to see what it costs. I don't want to get into something where we're expending, you know, an extravagant amount of taxpayer money um, with this services for this building. And, and, you know, I'm not new to building stuff here. I, everything that's been built lately, I, I mean, since 2002, I've been on this board and, and I've been in support and, and want to move forward. And fortunately, we're getting, we are getting to the end of, end of projects. There's, I don't think there's ever an end, but at least the county should be pretty stable right now as far as their um, facilities. So, so can I? I would, I would support that. And it's, it appears that, that you're supportive of that. And I know two commissioners are, so. Well, what I look at, Mr. Kirkpatrick, is the numbers through RS means. Okay, so you've got a range to build through. Let's say it's 280 to 330 based on your region. Okay, so you do an average number of that, $300 a square foot, with furniture, equipment, finished, unlock the door and walk in. You know, at 10,000 square feet, that's $3 million, correct? But that math I can do. Some people may not agree with me, but that math I can do. So, you know, there is estimating software out there. The numbers are in the book. There is, there is not a number for animal control services. There's, there's a number for animal hospitals. We're not building an animal hospital. We're building a small portion of an animal hospital. So they can, so they can treat animals. Mm -hmm. So, that, mean instead of in the kitchen, sir. Instead of in the kitchen, when they, where they do it now. I, that would be correct. From what my understanding is, that's where they have to treat animals at now. Okay. I visited it, and that's true. Yeah. Uh, I just, uh, you know, I, I, just concerned about the the amount uh, of money. There's a lot of you know support for this. There's a lot of. Uh, people who think it's ridiculous that we're considering spending this kind of money, um, you know. But I, I think what what I want to see is that we're very frugal, that we make sure that everybody understands what we're trying to do. Is you know, it's, the cost is driven by what's inside. I mean, you know, you've got a medical facility, basically, animal veterinarian facility in there for the dogs to be treated. And you've got, I had it uh, uh, described to me as a huge bathroom because you have to be able to clean and it has to be sanitized, has to be able to be washed down. Uh, so if you're building homes, you know, bathrooms are usually your most expensive things that you have to do. Uh, I know that we've got to sp spend some money to get it out there to at least see what we're looking at. I hope that we do this, that we really look at it, we, you know, we look at the you know, aesthetics, we do that, and I really appreciate what all the, the nonprofits are doing. Uh, if it wasn't for you all, we would have probably had to do something already out there, uh, because I know that you all are taking the, uh, a lot of the uh, overrun, and you know, we're actually uh, probably uh, preventing the county from having to do some more euthanasia just because of the overcrowdedness. But in saying that, we're trying to do what you all are doing. And I think we need help on this. 
and we need a lot of help. So. Yeah, I, I would second that. I, I was going to say I don't want to overlook the fact that the nonprofits have have saved the county a tremendous amount of money, and they're all in support of this. And I, I do recognize that. I, I have not discounted that one bit in my comments. Anything else? Okay, we have a motion and a second. I'll again call the vote. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that's unanimous. Thank you. We'll move forward with the design. Dale, thank you. Thank you. And we will have a budget amendment now for the remaining portion. Julie? I would also like to thank Mr. Burris. He spent a tremendous amount of time working with the architects to get us to this phase. Yeah, I know he has. And he was very prepared. Okay, Julie. All right, I have a budget amendment for you here, and um, we're taking 276250 which is the balance from the 325000 contract you just approved, and the amount that we had already budgeted. We're taking it from fund balance. It's a fund balance appropriation, and the thought here is that once we get the building built and get the loan for it, it'll pay back the uh, fund balance. Okay. All right, we entertain a motion that the budget amendment as presented be approved. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. At long last, now we move to Patsy Dowling. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for your, your, your patience. Uh, this was important that we have this, uh, this discussion, I think. Um, next up is um, a conversation and then a request regarding uh, lack of affordable housing and homelessness in Haywood County. I would say that this came about, and Patsy's been dealing with it forever, and I'm on that Mountain Projects board, and I've heard her talk about it forever. Um, I think it probably came to the fore um, as a result of some numbers the school system had about uh, in uh, more than 300 homeless children in Haywood County. Uh, and if I can take one second, just so everybody's on the same uh, plane, when the school system described 300 homeless children. I don't want people to think we've got 300 kids out here sleeping under bridges or in cars or something like that. It's a federal definition that's used, um, basically that says the child is not in his or her own permanent home. So if the child is living with a grandmother, um, say a single mom moves back in with her parents, um, those types of things, um, that label still applies. So it's, if, if you got any homelessness, it's a problem, especially with children, but it may not be life-threatening in some cases. You know, Multi-generational homes are not, uh, in some places, in some countries, are, are quite common. Uh, but having said that, um, the school system can only identify those children that are in school, and there can be siblings, uh, two or three to a family, uh, of actual homeless children that aren't counted. So. That's part of the reason that we're here today with, with Patsy and her request is we need to get a real good handle on, on the extent of the problem and how best to move forward. So Patsy, you've thank got you. it. And thank you all for the opportunity to be here this evening to discuss the issues of affordable housing in Haywood County. I'm joined by a group of colleagues, their board members, churches, concerned citizens, school staff, and municipalities who share concern over what we see as a growing need and serious issue in our community. Day after day, we struggle to meet the basic human needs of shelter for low-wage earners, including seniors and households with children. In Haywood County, Mountain Projects administer 684 vouchers to assist low-income earners, wage earners, to afford rental property in our county. Last year, Mountain Projects Board approved a priority of our rental assistance program be given to homeless. We were not prepared for the numbers we saw. We were literally overwhelmed and recently had to close the waiting list to get a handle on the more than 600 applications. If someone calls today facing eviction, we simply can do nothing. Last week, Waynesville Housing Authority shared that they opened a one-bedroom waiting list and had so many applications it had to close two weeks later. As you can see from the information on the screen, the, waiting is, the, the average wait is two years. And when a family finds a home, 
or gets a voucher, they must spend hours and hours trying to locate a place to rent. This is a challenge for many, especially those at the Pathway Center. Data from the National and State Low-Income Housing Coalition shows Haywood County is not alone. Congressional in the Congressional District, there's a shortage of 11,266 affordable units. If someone in affordable housing, if you ask someone in affordable housing their opinion on why this need is growing so quickly, you will hear things like the reduction in hours from employers who cannot comply with the Affordable Care Act, the increase in units after a record number of foreclosures, the overflow from other communities facing the same challenges, and the difference between a living wage and minimum wage. Often we see individuals working two full-time jobs and still not making enough to pay rent. A living wage climbs with a number in the households, but for a single person, it can be hard to find an entry-level job making over $10 an hour. As you can see, if you earn minimum wage, you have to work 86 hours a week to afford a two-bedroom rental in Haywood County. With the waiting list closed, I fear we will see an increase in homeless families beyond our current situation. Since I put this presentation together, I have received a lot of information from local churches that are doing so much to help and assist. The Canton churches have collected funds to begin a program called No Room at the End. Calvary Road often purchases hotel nights at local hotels, as does the Open Door, Mountain Projects, the Pathway Center, and local donors. Based on the information I have received, I estimate over 150 hotel nights for homeless families have been provided since October. This is an average of 25 days per month. Data shows us so much more cost effective to provide housing. In Canada, a town called Medicine Hat has eliminated homeless and saved millions of dollars for taxpayers providing options for all people. I have always thought that meeting human needs on the front end is an investment. There's a big difference in tw between $10,000 and $30,000. As you can see, there's some great efforts underway, but even with these current great efforts, serious shortages are still relevant. Last week, while enjoying a beautiful summer day at Lake Junaluska, I met a school social worker while walking. She shared with me that she had been working with a homeless, homeless grandmother with two grandchildren. That evening, I went home trying to determine what I was going to say here tonight, but my mind started wondering, what if those children ever get confused on what bus to ride, where they would sleep that night, and where their clothes were? I found it hard to imagine trying to learn while carrying that burden. Just thinking about it was heartbreaking. Having worked in this community for 26 years, I've seen Haywood County in blizzards, floods, good economic times and bad, but in all things, I've seen the best in human spirit to reach solutions, and we need to do that again. I know each of you care, and I know our community cares. Please provide the support we are requesting to assure that no senior or child has to go without a place they can afford to call home. There's endless models, options, and solutions, including tiny homes, backyard cottages, shared communities, just to name a few. But when you spend your days trying to make sure that somebody has shelter, deciding where to start and how to start becomes overwhelming. I'm here tonight on behalf of those we serve to ask you that we unite as a community and appoint a team to start Haywood County on a plan to assure affordable options are available for all persons. Simply, we need a systematic approach to find solutions. Thank you for allowing this presentation for your consideration of this request. Um, if I may, um, other counties in North Carolina have dealt with similar problems. Absolutely. It's, okay. it's a statewide issue. In fact, issue. probably every county in the nation has some kind of problem like this. But uh, our neighbors to the east, Buncombe and Henderson, um, commissioned a study with a uh, very qualified firm that led, got them closer to under, understanding the true nature of their problem, the extent of it, the scope of it. Right. And if I'm not mistaken, made some very specific recommendations moving forward of how these this issue could be uh, improved upon. 
Right. I don't know yeah. that you'll ever solve it 100 percent, but uh, that would be the goal, of course. Is that what you're thinking about? That is what I'm thinking about. And, and in this room, I, I would like the folks here for affordable housing maybe just to stand up because they've been sitting here for a long while. There's a lot of people here. This is a lot of folks who are concerned about this issue. We can't do it alone. We, we need help. And we really, in my opinion, we need a plan. These folks are doing great things. We're all doing great things. Mountain Projects, Habitat, the Pathway Center, I could go on down the list. But we're putting pieces together, and we need a plan. We're struggling to be able to continue to do that. And we need somebody to help launch that effort for us and help us guide us through that process. Everybody in this room is overworked. And, and we're all doing the best we can for folks, but we need help. Okay. Thank you all for coming. We appreciate what you do. Um, it's not easy. We do. We would like to have a study, um, the funds for a study. And I know I've been asked how much that costs, and I'm sorry I don't have a number, because I've never done this. And what we need to do is put out requests for proposal based on the scope of the service that we're requesting. There's several qualified folks across the state of North Carolina who do this, but to get, a, to get an estimate, I have to have some kind of authority to, to move forward. And also, this is a community-wide problem that, that needs community solutions. And so from that task force, I have talked with most municipalities here in the community, and several of our churches are willing to serve on that, but we need the county to help us. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a community right issue. Um, I know Mark is here from Economic Development. I've heard a lot about that tonight, but Communities can't grow if we don't have workforce housing. So it's a part of a bigger scheme, in my opinion. Okay. Hey, Nancy, has the, haven't other counties done these studies like? Uh, Buncombe and Henderson, I, I, I go to Henderson a lot. We've learned a lot from them, um, being some of my folks at Mountain Project. Um, I've learned that when you unite um, as a community, they, they have done a great deal of things, accomplished a great deal in that arena. I don't know of anybody to the West who's tackled affordable housing, but it is a, it is a statewide issue. Does anyone object to uh, authorizing uh, IRA in conjunction with Patsy? And I know uh, uh, Stoney from DSS has uh, expressed an interest in being involved in this uh, from a staff level, which is the appropriate agency, I think. Uh, and I know Kevin has uh, expressed an interest uh, from the commissioners in, um, in becoming involved in this. Um, Mr. Chairman, it, and I would like to help too. You okay. Have to do on the legal side. Okay. So is there any objection to uh, authorizing IRA and Patsy and, and Stoney and our county attorney to uh, issue a, a request for proposal? We'll find out what it will cost. Uh, um, maybe you'll need to have a few meetings, I guess, to determine the scope of what, you, what you're going to ask them to do before you go out. Um, and Patsy, would uh, the administering of some of this, would it be valuable to have it in, a, in your organization um, so that grants and so forth would be more likely, or does that matter? I don't think that matters. I'm happy to do that. Of okay. course, pending board approval, and I'll have my board chair here, and board members here. Um, it, it doesn't have to be Mountain Projects, but I'm, I'm happy for it to be. What, what I care about is it getting done. Right. So if, if it's Mountain Projects, great. Some other organization, if it's a county, what matters is let's, let's get it done. Well, if the board will indulge me then, I would suggest that uh, Ira and Patsy, Stoney, Kevin, uh, get together and sooner than later and um, determine the scope of what, what you want this study to, to tell us. I have a dream, and ever, a lot of people at the Pathway Center know I have a dream. It's called From Homeless to Home Ownership. And I would like a continuum of care. When one person gets out of homelessness, they have somewhere to transition to. And on out the end, um, we see that people really do want a roof over their head, and people really can become homeowners with right. a lot of counsel and a lot of help. And yeah. I think Habitat's a great example of that. I think it's important that the outreach to the municipalities continue, Gavin. I know you agree, um, because a lot of these folks live in, in these municipalities, in the, in the towns. Probably. I have buy-in from three of them. Pardon? Buy-in from three of them. You do? OK. Yes, I do. Very good. Very good. So is, is the board, uh, do you agree with this approach at this point? Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's going to, it's going to probably get worse before it gets better if you want to know the truth. I mean, 
fact of the matter is, is that we got there's a lot of people that can't afford to live in Buncombe County that are moving this way to purchase actual homes that probably are raising the price of homes and the cost of living and the cost of rent here as well. I know the cost of rent has gone up. Um, it's going to be a difficult problem to tackle. Yes. But we got to start somewhere. Well, the sooner we start, the better off we are, I think. So. Uh, can I get a hold of that Kenny Minto law? Just the definition of yeah, yes, we can get you the definition of the McKinney Vento law. Yeah, it's that federal thing that was referenced there. Like yeah, I Googled it the other day. It's pretty specific. Okay, I would think it would. Um, uh, I know we didn't uh, vote to spend any money or anything, but I would like to take a vote which tells people we're we're serious about forming a task force. We're authorizing the staff to go out for proposals and asking them to have more outreach uh, into any of the nonprofits that you think can help to the municipalities and likewise. So I would entertain that motion at this point. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 And, thank uh, you again. We will, thank you. Okay, next up is Julie Davis again with a request from the Crabtree Iron Tough Iron Duff Volunteer Fire Department by a new fire truck. And we have some members of the Crabtree Iron Duff Volunteer uh, Fire Department here too. Um, do you want me to give them everybody a minute to? Yeah, we'll give just a minute. Thanks for helping. They're leaving pretty quietly. I'll go yeah, ahead and okay. get started again. <laughs> the, um, I'm here to request, or really to talk a little bit about the Crabtree Iron Duff um, Fire Department. They're going to tell you about the truck that they need and why they need it and how their ISO insurance ratings um, could benefit. But uh, the fire departments usually have to come to the commissioners to get approval so that we can be sure that they have the um, capacity to repay the debt. So I look at their financial statements and talk with the fire departments. And um, in this particular case, the, they look like they are going to be borrowing 280000 which is um, toward a 200, uh, 407, 400, what's the dollar amount of the truck? 347000 $347,000 truck. The 280000 equates to about $32,000 in debt service. They have, their financials have been showing about a sixteen seventeen thousand dollars $17,000 capacity um, but they increased the tax rate last year, so now their capacity is about 35000 So it does look like they have increased the tax rate to be able to afford to pay the debt service on this new fire truck, but I would be remiss if I didn't mention that it's going to be close. So um, I w having said that, I'll let them tell you about the truck and how they, uh, what they need. And let me also mention, too, this is the... Um, the debt they would like to enter into for this tri fire truck is only their second debt. The only other debt that they have is for their building. Yeah. Judy, before we get into the sp specifics of the truck, uh, talk a little bit about their fund balance that they have. Yes, they, they have been saving money. They've been accumulating fund balance at the end of last year. They call it um, uh, net assets in their financials. It was about 900000 and a lot of that is in cash. I think they had about 350000 in cash. So if they did, if it's close, and one year you couldn't handle it, you could you would have enough in your fund balance. It does appear that. they do, just barely, but they do have the capacity to pay for this debt. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. The um, my name's Tyrell Mahaffey with Crabtree Fire Department. Um, on the uh, I'll just say one thing right quick on the loan amount of two hundred eighty thousand. Um, that is with a little extra money that we added to that loan in case we, when you get to the factory, if, if we miss something and there was a little extra cost added to it. Uh, hopefully, when the truck is complete, we'll be able to turn in a portion of that money, uh, 20 to 30,000 of the 280 that we won't be using. We're hoping to be able to complete the truck for in the neighborhood of about 240 to 250. And the terms agreed with the bank is at that time, if we don't need that money, we can turn it back over to them and they'll readjust our, our payment amount and everything at that time if we, if we don't need it all. Um, 
what we're the reason behind this is uh, I'm sure uh, some of the commissioners and I know Mike probably was involved in it a few years back. A lot of the fire departments in the county is going through a, an insurance rating inspection, which uh, make a long story short, if you're able to go through and, and lower your insurance rating, that affects the citizens of the community you serve by lowering their, their premiums on their homeowners. Uh, we were able to, to do that inspection in 2013, and we went from a class nine to a class six uh, for everybody within five miles of the fire department. Uh, we've had people call that it saved them $200 a year, and the highest number of someone reported it saved them $1,000 a year on their insurance. Um, with that being said, once you do lower your rating, you have to maintain it. The, the state can come back and re-inspect you, they tell us, every five years is when that'll happen. And you have to try to maintain that or you take the chance of your rating going back up uh, at that time. Um, that's where this new truck comes in. We have a truck now that's approaching about 28 years of age and uh, possibility of this year it's not going to pass its yearly pump test that it has to go through every year to be classified as a fire engine. Um, like I say that's that's kind of the reasoning behind the purchase of the truck. Uh, the one that we're looking at is a, a 2017 a Freightliner uh, top mount pump and uh, that that's kind of what we we're going to be replacing the older one with. Did you have a public hearing? Um, yes, we did. Uh, yes. Was there any opposition? Uh, no opposition. We had 19 uh, total people present and no opposition. Okay. I want to make a comment that uh, uh, somewhat involved with Jonathan Creek, Crabtree, uh, some of the other fire departments, and I know there was a lot, a lot of work went into this uh, uh, rating and trying to get it down. They were successful. And I do know that, that one of the reasons they're having to pursue this truck is to, so they can maintain that. Uh, that, that was a big deal, big deal for the citizens. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, a lot of work for, for guys that volunteer time. I can yeah. tell you, yeah. a lot of work. Mm -hmm. We went through, uh, just right quick, uh, ourselves at Crabtree, Jonathan Creek, and, and Maggie Valley, we all, through, we all three went through the inspection at the same time. And, uh, a lot of hard work in it from all three, and all three were successful in lowering, lowering their rating for the, their community. It's quite a savings to the homeowner. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any questions? Uh, Tyrell, could you tell, just, just tell us a little bit about the truck and what it does? And uh, Yeah, it, um, from our perspective, it'll be classified as a, a fire engine. And uh, uh, according to state guidelines, you have to have two fire engines responding on any dispatch structure fire. And that's where this new truck would come. It would be our main main engine to leave the building when we're dispatched to a fire. Uh, it has a it's going to have a pumping capability of 1,500 gallons a minute, and uh, it'll it'll just be your main attack engine uh, on the scene of a of a house fire. Thank Any you. other questions or comments? Okay, then. If not, then uh, I'd entertain a, a motion that the Crabtree Iron Dove Volunteer Fire Department. Uh, uh, be approved to enter into an installment agreement with First Citizens Bank in the amount of $280,000 in order to purchase a new fire truck as described. I move. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. That's unanimous. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Thanks. Yes, sir. Thank you. Appreciate what you do. Okay. We have next up is uh, Chief Jeff Haynes from the Haywood County Sheriff's Office to talk about the century link for the 911 cir uh, circuits at the new 911 center. Jeff. Good evening, uh, gentlemen. Thank you so much for this evening. We're uh, here to request an approval for the 911 contract and other 911 contract for CenturyLink uh, for the 911 circuits at the new 911 center that has been under construction now for several months. Uh, this is just a continuation of the, uh, uh, of the grant funded uh, project that we are actually moving probably about 75% uh, done with the construction portion. And uh, this will this will help go ahead and increase the, our capabilities uh, when the new 911 center opens, and that will be uh, the request is in the amount of $155,240 and four cents, uh, which will be paid for out of the 911 grant. Okay. Any questions of Jeff? If not, would entertain a motion that the uh, uh, contract with CenturyLink for the 911 circuits 
in the amount of $155,240.04, as further described by Chief Ains, be approved. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. That's unanimous. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Jeff. All right, next up, we have our county manager with a request for approval from the North Carolina Department of Transportation for the Lake Logan Multisport Festival. Yes, Ira. the Lake Logan uh, Multisport Festival will be held this August. I've been informed um, just a moment ago by the organizer that the date is going to be changed to the August 6th and 7th. Is that correct? The correct date. The August 6th and 7th will be the, the date that that event will be. And asking permission, the Sheriff's Office has uh, worked to make a plan. This is a very large event. They usually have over 800 participants. To make sure that the roads are closed and safe, the Sheriff's Department is with it, and DOT asked the letter of county support. Okay. All right. Any questions of Ira? If not, would uh, entertain a motion that the letter uh, of approval to the North Carolina Department of Transportation for the Lake Logan Multisport Festival be approved, and that I, as chairman, be authorized to sign the letter. Or actually, or, I would sign this. Or delegate it to Ira. Okay. So entertain that motion. So move. Okay. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Can, can I make a comment about that? Could you talk to them in that letter or put in that letter? I, I know we had some complaints last time, I, if you remember, about um, the, how they set that up that day and notifying the public because they didn't know they couldn't leave their house. And I just had, I don't know, three or four emails last time. People and could, so, they got, couldn't get out. For yeah. Just provide notice of when they can. and. I don't know. So how just we a little extra. That, we can. Uh, I would definitely a little extra notice to the public that might be affected by those neighborhoods on the route. Is the, will the road be closed? No. Just, I don't know. I know it's, no, it's difficult. I think for like a short period of time. Is that correct? You know, maybe like where a bunch of bicycles are going you want to by. Introduce or yourself. Yeah, my name is Greg Duff. I'm sorry. I, I'm Glory Hound Events. I've been putting this on for. This is our 11th year. Um, <clears throat> It's a, as you can imagine, it's a bit of a challenge. We have uh, about 800 people on Saturday and another three or 400 on Sunday. Um, um, the bike portion really is, is the easy f part for us because we have so much cooperation with local jurisdictions, but the run portion up 215 from Lake Logan up toward the parkway is, is the challenge. Um, we do our very, very best to notify everybody. I put personally put notices on mailboxes telling them what's going on and when the time frame is. And the road is not closed. They can get out. It is just it gets a, from a period of about you know, 9 o'clock in the morning to about noon. It's a little, it's busy, but you can get out. And we do try to alleviate the congestion up on top at the parkway, notifying people who may be trying to come down 215, and it may not be the best time to do that. Um, but um, yeah, I understand. We, we try to work with the homeowners. We work really close with Burnett Siding Church to l inform them as we do with all the churches on the entire route. Okay. And I guess we can tell everybody it's going to be August 20th. It's actually the 21st. August 6th and 7th. Oh, that was just a, that was a misprint on my wrong part, day. and I apologize. August 6th and 7th. Yes, sir. So that'll, that'll be somebody's notice. I can put that in the paper, too, maybe. Let's put that on our <laughs> website, too. Uh, <laughs> happy to. Any other questions or comments? Okay, we've, we've approved it uh, already. So uh, the next item is whether or not the board wants to delegate authority for this and future events like this to the county manager to coordinate through the sheriff's office, because that's basically what it, it is in all cases, is making sure that deputies are going to be out there to control traffic and one thing and another. And is this something we want to continue to be brought before our board or delegate that back to the county manager? probably don't have a real issue with uh, allowing the county manager to do that. I think I would still like to be informed because we're going to be the ones that get calls on it. Yeah. So if we don't know what's going well, on. Well, in your briefing to us, you can always you know, do that, yes. I would think. Well, and the good thing about it is it gives them one more chance to publicize it. We could have a debate on it like we did a minute ago. Maybe that'll <laughs> give them more time. <laughs> <laughs> What's the, uh, I just, just like you said, I mean, you know, we're going to get, you know, if there's issues or whatever it is, we're going to get calls. I think, you know, we probably need to be informed. Yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable with having Ira do that. He keeps us informed. I don't think he's, yeah. got, he's got a track record. It's not like something happens and we don't know about it. Yeah. 
He communicates well with us. So yeah. what? You used to tell me, Mr. Swanger, the best surprise is no, no surprise. surprise. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then what I'm hearing is that uh, I would uh, entertain a motion to approve the delegation of the, uh, to the county manager to sign documents that require uh, county support for um, events like this, cycling, biking, et cetera, um, that fall into the com competitive entertainment arena. So I would entertain that motion. So move. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Very good. That concludes uh, our agenda for today. Uh, at this point, we'd entertain a motion to enter into closed session for attorney-client privilege 143-318.11A3. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, we're in closed session. Okay, we have returned from closed session. Is there additional business for the board? Hearing none, we'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Move. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Say we are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>